last we did was the the second verse which spoke about the first motivation the first motivation the text is talking about is acquisition of wealth he says o fool give up your thirst for acquiring and aggrandizing wealth instead create the thought of reality in your mind instead of the thirst mudhajahihi dhanagama trishna kuru sad buddhim manase vitrishna whatever you get from your action content your mind with that wealth obtained <clears throat> so i have mentioned in the the scripture sadly is misunderstood the text is not telling us not to acquire wealth the text is very clearly saying please give up the thirst for acquiring don't fall up prey to the uncontrollable urge the trishna the thirst for acquisition yet you may acquire but don't fall a prey to the lust or the greed or the obsession for acquisition because the moment you fall a prey to it moment you are limited by that pursuit of wealth your life thereafter would be defined your life thereafter would only be limited to that pursuit alone you you will fail to realize that life has much greater much grander purpose your life will be limited now we all need wealth to carry on with our lives that's different to life is just served to fulfill that one objective of aggrandizing wealth there's a world of difference in both you need to carry on with your life i need to carry on with our lives all of us need wealth undoubtedly we need it there's nothing wrong with it in fact we worship god as lakshmi so there's nothing wrong with wealth having wealth there's nothing wrong with being blessed with wealth but what's wrong is your wrong relationship with wealth if you don't know how to deal with it that which is a blessing can become a curse in many a people wealth has become a curse it is said in the scriptures even in western literature it's very well portrayed it said where wealth accumulates men decay you should never allow the wealth to accumulate the wealth should only be an avenue which serves your needs and serves the needs of others that's the only objective material wealth is only a gross commodity that can only buy you gross things remember iron and gold are good for buying iron and gold nothing more nothing less when you understand something in its entirety as to what it can offer you would not fall a prey to it you will not be slave to it because everything has a limited offering but sadly when you don't realize it when you don't give up the black market value for what the pursuit of wealth you fall a prey to it you fall a prey you develop this greed there was a very wealthy businessman who had a palatial house who had everything that he could ask for but he found himself very discontented but he had a neighbor who also had a large parcel of land but he didn't want to convert his old ancestral property into a luxurious villa he was very happy contented in that old building which where he grew up he lived his life and he always was very happy very contented he was 
always having a smile and everybody would would he always invited people over and you know full of life and our wealthy wealthy businessman the next door neighbor was very envious at it and he didn't like that and one 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 night what he did he threw a a box a jar with some valuables in it <clears throat> threw across to the compound and in then started watching the the magic happen and thereafter no sooner he started finding his neighbor not his normal self he became more restless there was a little anxiety he was running and hush hushing and worrying he lost his charm and smile on his face and his when his spouse asked what have you done i threw a bar a, 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 a box a jar of gold coins in them but i intentionally left three short of 100 and he is and when that man opened that box he said man what is this i have done something extraordinarily wonderful that god has blessed me with so much of wealth but when he started counting his coins which the blessing that came his way he found he was short of 100 and then all he was running there after was to make that 97 into 100 he lost his peace he lost his happiness as rama tirtha calls it all of us mark my words none of us are exempt from it there's only one way you can you can excuse yourself from it and what is it that we are all caught up in he says we are all caught up in the snare of 99 i mentioned this before it would resonate well when you understand that 99 is a snare there is no 100 all your life you are just wanting to get one more one more one more <clears throat> so don't fall a prey to it that's all they're saying and then the verse also says be content with that wealth obtained now how can you find contentment with wealth obtained how is it possible when wealth as the example i drew draws you to acquire more how do you find contentment with wealth do you have a solution for it have you thought over it we have dealt over this but i have not expanded on this particular aspect so i'll quickly clarify it but before me saying it i would like to hear from some of you how to find contentment with wealth when wealth in itself has that trait in it to instill that greed for acquiring more and more so when that is the trait in wealth how do you find contentment with wealth how is it possible and yet you must learn to be contented with whatever wealth your actions provide how do you balance these two very difficult but you must learn it's not easy nothing comes easy in life isn't it so must you find contentment with your wealth how do you find contentment hmm? there is nowhere else you got to find it with what you are doing don't search it anywhere else please it's nowhere anywhere other than where you are and what you are doing so the same activity which creates this greed and lust in you the same action can create that enormous contentment in you how do you do, how do you find it it's not something you can uh, you can answer without considerable thought and attention but still i want to hear from you can i ask hiren ji please are you
ओके हरिओम हरिओम वंस यू लर्न हाउ टू गिव अवे इफ यू हैव समथिंग यू कंसीडर दैट सफिशिएंट आई एम लिविंग हैप्पीली विथ व्हाट आई हैव इफ आई हैव मोर आई नीड टू लर्न गिव इट अवे टू अदर्स वंस यू लर्न दैट हैबिट और बिहेवियर then you will always remain contented very well said appreciate that i would like to hear from others krishnan ji uh krishnan ji just a minute uh, uh, if i could, if you can just hold on for a minute please uh, yes hara prasad ji uh yes sir uh, you have to view anything that happens as uh, ishwara prasada and hmm. ishwara arpana if i get a million dollars tomorrow morning it is ishwara prasada and if i lose 100 million dollars tomorrow it is ishwara arpana that's how i view it wonderful all right much appreciated i don't i'm not saying any that you are you're thinking is wrong and i'm only trying to uh look at it and that's what makes it interesting that the same thing can be looked at from different perspective when you have different views nothing is right and wrong at all you are please wonderful ji yeah krishnan ji i i think it's it's a, i think it's it's a good question but we have to ask ourselves what are our needs are okay we have to define the boundary and say hey this is what we need to live and once you reach that then we should ask ourselves if if we get more than what we need we should be as hiran said we should be able to give it back to the community give it back rather than saying i need more and more i think it's all depends on individual person okay but i think once you reach that level i think um, we, uh, when you when you give it to somebody when you give help you, other person then you feel really good and that makes the content that, that that makes you satisfaction all right but i think all our needs uh have been more than met not that our needs remain the same what our needs were 30 40 years ago and what your needs are today are not the same so even taking a measure of your needs in the present context our needs are more than met and yet we are not content so it's it's purely subjective how you relate as you all have said all right it's okay um miki ji any thoughts uh well guru ji not sure but i was thinking that uh, if if you are blessed with wealth um then if there is a way in which you can uh, consider yourself not so much as the owner of that wealth but as a temporary custodian of the wealth then i think the perspective could change a little bit oh. you know i was thinking like a college principal right he does not own the college but he has the very important responsibility and his actions are going to her actions will determine you know what how how well the students get trained so normally people with wealth will also have employees or other people that are dependent on them and um i guess it gets back to the original teachings you've been sharing with us which is to you know try to get out of the 99% habit mm. yes yeah very nice very nice now <clears throat> if if i can take in fact i will be actually i didn't have an answer to that eh? so i needed answers so i had to listen to what you all had to say so taking from lead from all what you have said uh, now the uh, the shastras in fact the verse actually gives us an answer way out of it the very first line he says mooda jahi hi dhanagam trishna give up your thirst for aggrandizing 
instead create a thought of the reality. So the only way you will get out of the clutches of the snares of 99, as Mickey G has said, the only way you will get yourself free from falling a prey to this powerful urge. Don't undermine this urge. It is a very, very powerful. Humanity at large has fallen a prey to it. It is not, don't poo poo this thought. Ah, oh, I am very contented. I am not fallen a prey to this. I am very happy. Don't ever make yourself falsely believing that you are above it. There's a great chance you have fallen a prey to it. Please remember that. Please realize that. Sadly, Humanity has fallen a prey to it. So the Shastra is saying the only way you will get out of the clutches of this greed, the insatiable greed, they say it's like fire, the insatiable urge to acquire, only way is Kuru Sad Buddhim Manasivit Krishna. Create the thought of the reality in your mind instead of the thirst. So the only way you will conquer this prey for acquisition is by creating a thought of something higher, something grander, something greater. The highest is the thought of the reality. So if, now ask yourself, is acquisition of wealth, is it the object of your pursuit? Is it the purpose of your life? Let us be very clear, stand in front of the mirror and ask yourself, is this the objective of my work? I remember telling uh, the, the trustees and we had a, a, a meeting we often keep having. In one of the meetings, I said, the objective of the trust is not to raise money. I have not set up this trust to raise money. The objective of the trust is to serve the cause, which is to serve this wisdom, which is to serve this knowledge, which right now is being served to you all. Your beneficiaries of the efforts of the trust and the efforts being embarked by a whole lot of people. The objective to serve people, the objective of setting up this wisdom foundation is not to, to, is not to find avenues how funds can be pumped into this organization. If that is the objective, I've, it defeats the very purpose what this organization is meant for or what the work you're embarking. The objective is not to raise funds. So if I have set up a trust only to generate funds, the objective is not what it's meant to be, what it should be. The objective is to serve the cause for which you may need resources. You will need resources. That is secondary. But the wealth is not the purpose of the activity. Wealth is a byproduct of the activity you embarked on. So the only way you will fall, you will not fall a prey is ask yourself, is wealth the product of my pursuit or the purpose of my pursuit or is the byproduct of my pursuit? Clearly ask yourself, is it the main product or the byproduct? And everything you pursue, everything you manufacture, anything you do in life, that is a byproduct, isn't it? Now, is wealth the product or the purpose of your life or is it the byproduct of your actions? And if it's a byproduct, that is when you will not fall a prey to what it is. If it can come as sound and clear, if it can come as loud as it can, even my throat seems to have been cleared. If it can be as clear and audible, if it's not increase your volume, let people in the family wake up. For those who are attending from the Eastern time zone, you know, it's still five, just, just, prior, just before six. So let everybody wake up and hear the truth. Why plug into your ears? Let the truth resound. Let wealth not be the object of your pursuit. The purpose of life should be to serve a larger cause, a larger purpose, a larger vision, larger mission. And that is when you rise above the, the powerful clutches of wealth. You will not fall a prey to greed for wanting more and more. Just take an honest look at yourself. Are you a taker or are you a giver? A, a taker will never find himself contented. Only a life of a giver, you will find yourself contented. 
so wealth should be a by product and when is a wealth by product when you when you acquire wealth through a sattvic means see wealth can be acquired through different means whether through tamasic through rajasic or sattvic there are different ways you can acquire wealth because there are different types of people the sattvic person lives a life of service and sacrifice and whatever his life gives he is content with the remnants of sacrifice whatever your life of sacrifice gives you whatever remnants means whatever you get out of your spirit of service find contentment with that obtain sukha santaha the scriptures say the gita says sukha santaha these are the people who lead a righteous life an auspicious life and you lead a life and out of that life of service and sacrifice whatever wealth you get it could be it could be 10 dollars it could be 100000 dollars it could be a million dollars somebody has said who who are who am i who are you to determine what i should deserve am i to determine what you deserve are you sitting there to determine what i deserve na nah. providence will determine what i deserve and let that providence enable and ennoble me and all i all i do is do my act with a spirit of service and sacrifice and let me find contentment at every stage of my life with what my actions have given because i only reap the fruits of remnants of my sacrifice there is no other way you will find contentment if there is some other way please find out and share with us this is what the shastra is saying this is what the guru adi shankara acharya is saying mood jahi hi dhana gama trishna kuru sad buddhim manasi vitrishna the only way is entertain the thought of the higher at all times let the thought of wealth should not be overpowering the thought of the higher a grander purpose ask yourself all right so there must be the higher purpose a higher goal always drawing you forward okay a very powerful message please don't misunderstand it it's only how you relate with it all right mm-hmm.